Leilani and today I'm going to compare two popular curriculums when teaching classical education with language arts and writing. And that would be writing and rhetoric. This is by Classical Academic Press. And then there is All Things Fun and Fascinating and this is by IEW. First, I'm going to compare the outline of the books and the table of contents. Then I'm going to walk you through a chapter of each of these books. And then I'm going to show you some little details here and there that I've noticed because I've gone through both of these books with my child and I've noticed some things. And then I'm going to also share with you at the very end which one I prefer. I am a former public and private school teacher. I do homeschool four kids, one with special needs, and I am an evaluator for homeschoolers in the state of Florida. If you're interested in seeing what this channel is all about, I'll, I'll tell you. You can also check out in the description box below as well. At the end of the video, I'll stick some links around my face. We share with you our journey and all the little obstacles we face and how we overcome them, not just with the special needs, but also with the homeschooling in general. So I'm here to share this with you from a personal and professional level on this channel. So feel free to subscribe and check us out as we continue on this journey. But let's talk about these two books and get started. All right, the first thing I want to point out to you about the writing and rhetoric books is that on the very back, they have an outline of what each year looks like. Now, each year does have some kind of theme, like book one is fables, book two is narrative, book three is narrative two, and it goes on as you grow up through high school. Now, looking at IEW, that's not what they do. What they do is they have the same exact outline. So as you can see, they always start first chapter keyword outlines, then writing outlines, then narrative stories. This is extra, this is not in every book but then it goes on to summarizing references, writing from pictures, multiple source research, creative writing, and then of course the final review. Now, as you go into the upper level books, they're gonna add on to this basic pattern with some more um, skills and topics, but it is, it's basically, here's a scope and sequence, the same exact pattern. So really when you're looking at the table of contents, it's really hard to compare the two of them because they are written very, very differently. Now both of these are around third through fifth grade level. This one says fourth and fifth grade level. This book can be done third, fourth, fifth. There is another book right above this, which is the study of the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe before you get into middle school. I did not go through that one because we read The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe on our own, and I didn't want to have to go back over it with um, the writing and rhetoric. So actually, I got this book instead. So um, let's move on to looking at the first chapter of each of these books. So I'm going to skip over lesson one because this does tend to be a review of what they learned previously. And I'm going to skip right on ahead to lesson two, even though it is kind of the same exact structure and format. So this is going to be a review of narrative types. It's going to introduce you to a nice little summary. It's going to give you some vocabulary words, literary terms. And it's going to give you some examples. Then it's going to give you a story. In this case, they gave you a poem. Then, very Charlotte Mason, is they want you to tell the story back to whoever's teaching you, whether it's your parent, tutor, teacher, orally. Then you're going to talk about it. You're going to have some questions that you're going to go over, have a discussion. And then on the next page, going deeper. Now we're going to do some written work. So we're going to go through each of these sections. And it's not always the same. It's different. So this, in this case, they're going through each section. And you're labeling, is it a fable, parable, fairy tale, history, myth, throughout. They can write in the book. My son, I had him write in a journal. And this book does. It continues through. It's about four pages long, approximately. Okay, and now they're going to have you do copy work. And then they're going to have you do dictation, where the parent or teacher is going to read a passage from the story and write it down. Then you're going to do another written type of activity, and they kind of change throughout. So this is an amplification, where you're going to rewrite this story and just basically amplify it. And then there's kind of a speak it, go deeper kind of segment. Now, I did say that 
each end of the chapter, they do have something, you know, uh, a little bit to just with the writing skills to make it a little more interesting or build another skill. Well, for example, here, you're just writing a summary and you do amplification again. And then here, write your own fable is what you're going to do for the writing portion. Spigot is very interesting for this chapter because you're going to take two narrative poems about pride and conceit, and you're supposed to either memorize the whole poem, um, and you're also doing some compare and contrasting. Now, when you get to this chapter, you're going to start working on outlines. It's nothing like the keyword outline that IEW teaches. It's your basic outline that you, we all learned in public school when you're trying to take notes in a class or outline a paper. It's the old school outline that I learned um, in public school and probably most of us too. And so that's kind of the pattern. You have like an introduction that gives you some literary terms and then you have a nice story to read. Then you do it orally. Then this one, you went straight to the outline. You talk about it, ask questions, have a discussion, and then some written work. You know, it teaches you little literary skills like, um, of course, you know, synonyms, antonyms, similes, metaphors, they always have dictation. And then once again, at the end, they're going to do some kind of writing, in this case, a summary. Now, this one adds a little bit of an extra. They're going to do dialoguing and um, then speak it, playing an um game. This is more like an, an activity. Here's some possible topics. This is a, because one of the things with classical education is it's not just about writing, but it's also about public speaking. So, you know, this does have some, like this is the um game or uh, which hopefully I haven't said any ums in this video, but, um, see, I just did it. Oh my gosh. It's count how many times you say the word um. Anyway, back here, there is a play somewhere in the future. I don't know where it is that you're supposed to read with a partner out loud. Um, a lot of these, see, I just said, um, again, <laughs> a lot of these stories towards the end in this book are going to be a lot of your classical history. I mean, you've got the fire of Rome, you got Julius Caesar, which is very interesting. If you don't like that kind of stuff, you might not want to get this particular book. I don't know what kind of stories or literature is used in the other books, but I know this one seems to be pretty heavy on the ancient history, Greeks and Romans, which me personally, I'm not too crazy about. I love ancient history and history in and of itself, but it was a little heavy, especially for my son. It really, really, really stretched him, which is good. It was definitely a different approach to language arts for him. But let me look at IEW for you. Okay, this one's going to be written in, I apologize, because my son used it. Let's just look at this book. Okay, so lesson one, they're going to give you your goals. They're going to talk about a keyword outline. Writing and rhetoric does not teach the keyword outline. In fact, I think this is strictly an IEW thing where you read through it, pick three big words. You can add pictures. You can use abbreviations along with it but three full words at maximum that you can use in the keyword outline. So you write that keyword outline and then you're going to have some kind of vocabulary words that you're going to work on and um, you're going to work on your grammar, those nouns and adjectives, which is something I really like about IEW is you're teaching you, they're teaching you techniques on how to make stories better. He comes from um, the guy who wrote it came from a background of teaching Suzuki. So Suzuki method is a style that you use in um, music. You're going to learn from the classical, the good, the well-written pieces of music to make you a better musician. This is the same way. You're going to find good pieces of literature. You're going to study them, mimic them to make you a better writer. And then they're going to teach you the dress ups along the way. I do have a full review on how to use IEW. I'm going to stick a link up at the top. So if you're interested in learning more about IEW, you can check out that link. This is the story of floating rocks. It's not that long. It's not that scary, but then you're supposed to build an outline out of it. Teaches you about the different symbols. Okay. That was really easy because this is the very beginning because they're just going to go into another one where you read the story 
and you write an outline because it's getting you used to building that outline. But I'm going to fast forward. And of course, like I said, they're going to change the topics from lesson to lesson. Now, this is writing from outlines. So this is the ant and the grasshopper, which we all know that story. We're going to talk about banned adjectives because they're saying these are just adjectives you don't want to use when you're writing. And it's a little game. They have games in here, too. That's another thing with IEW. They have little games. If you, The teacher manual is downloadable for free, and they'll share those with you. Sentence openers, they talk about that dress-up. They give you a background. So this is not literary terms. This is good writing techniques that they're giving you. LY adverbs, so this is grammar. Then they're going to give you the assignment, which is seems to be similar along the way. You have the story. You write the keyword outline. You brainstorm ideas for dress-ups, whatever you're working on this week, whether it's LY adverb, verbs, quality adjectives. In this lesson, they're talking about alliteration. So you're going to have a little bit of fun doing some alliteration. And then this is your assignment. This is your checklist. You want to go through and follow this and write your own paper. I always had my son type it up. This is just an example of one. After they type it up, they go through and they write, is it an adjective or is it L-Y? Is it a strong verb? So they're going back and labeling the actual dress-ups that they put in there. Now this also has, if you when you download the teacher's manual, there is some vocabulary quizzes because they do teach you vocabulary words. So idealistically, you don't really have to go out and get your own you know, vocabulary workbook unless you want some more. But if you can look at this, this is quiz five. This is from lesson 20. They have one of these, I want to say like every three or four lessons as a review, but you're using these words and you're reading about them in the lesson. I'm going to go a little bit further into the book where it gets a little bit more challenging. So let's say lesson 12 is going to be summarizing references. All right, they're going to give you your little goals in review. And here's your story. So see how it gets longer. It's not just one paragraph. This is four. Keyword outline is going to be way more in depth. Down here, they're actually going to have you get some fun facts about what you read. And right away, you're going to go right through the checklist that they give you. What I also like about this book is in the very, very back, you don't have to go out and buy a thesaurus or a dictionary. They're actually going to give you a reference page for different quality adjectives. And what's also very nice is that for the little bitties that are intimidated by all these words being thrown at them, these are small and simple and they don't have that many to go through. What's actually really nice is that we have said, oh, pick another adjective for good. And we go through and my son's like, um, what does flourishing mean? And so we have a conversation about what this means. These are different, very different. I would say to, to sum it up, this book is going to talk about literary terminology. It's going to have some literary terms. It gives you some historical nonfiction and fiction stories that you can work from. So you're learning about those things. Not that IEW doesn't do it, but they do it too. There is some dictation. There's some copy work. There's some speaking. And it switches it up. It's not the same thing that you're repeating over and over again. It switches things up, which is nice. But this program does not do a lot of writing. It does outlines and summaries. It doesn't do writing and it doesn't teach you grammar and it doesn't teach you how to make what you write beautiful and appealing to whoever's reading it. IEW does that. IEW is going to give you some historical stories to read from like this one. You know, you do stuff on Benjamin Franklin. Uh, you do some with some like the ant and the grasshopper and, uh, Thomas Edison. So you have some, some good history that you're learning, but it is the same pattern, but you are focused on grammar. You're finding like a little find and seek quality adjectives and adverbs, and you're learning like writing techniques to make it appealing to, to the reader. So I do like this. And, and we also have the, uh, we're going to use this this year, the grammar fix it to really help stress good grammar. I, this book is different because you are looking at a passage and you are going to correct it as you go. I think this is going to be great for my son because 
that is where his weakness is. If I tell him to go back over his paper and circle the wrong things, he doesn't necessarily do it. I'm hoping that if he does this, it'll feed into that. And so we're just gonna see what happens because like I said, everyone's different. And if it doesn't work for him, you know what? I'll, I'll throw it out. But so far, I like the concept of this. There's also this book by IEW, which seems to be kind of little short and sweet activities, writing activities. And then we also use Banish Boring Words, which has nothing to do with IEW. This is uh, actually Scholastic, and it gives you some fun words that you can add to your stories. They have lots of adjectives and adverbs and lots of fun and L-Y adverbs that you can uh, just kind of reference and use. I use this when I'm trying to find good titles for my YouTube videos or if I'm writing something. So I, I love it. It's a good reference for me too. So I do hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions, you know, of course, leave them in the comments down below. I, I'm very active on making sure I get those comments answered for you. And um, check out some videos around case right now because you might be interested in one of those. And do consider subscribing, joining us on our journey as we homeschool our four kids and raise my daughter with Down syndrome. Um, super exciting stuff. And until then, I will see you guys in our next video.